Hey everyone, welcome to Three Beers Deep for August 3rd, 2015. As we roll into August, we are joined by you and by me for my weekly Q&A show in which you can submit questions to patrickklepik.tumblr.com. I answer them in a text format, in a type on the keyboard format uh, during the day several times a week, and then I pluck from the questions that you submit there to answer on this weekly Q&A show. So let's get right to your questions because you keep sending them, and I guess I should probably... I mean, I said I keep answering them, so I, I should probably try and live up to that side of the bargain. Uh, Gaius Marius Popularis, great username, by the way, says, Are your new Spooking with Scoops archived anywhere? So uh, there was recently a three-part Spooking with Scoops in which I played three different games. They were split up, put up on my YouTube channel over at youtube.com slash Patrick Kluppick. You can check them out there. We played Clown House. We played... Uh, Spooky's House of Jump Scares and uh, Five Nights at Freddy's 4. Uh, and I'm looking at some other games to get another one of those lined up real soon. I'd like to at least try and do those once every two weeks. I know that people really enjoy doing those. I really enjoy doing them as well. So we're looking into, we're, you know, me and my team are looking into some other d d videos of these games of these video games, of these horror games. Um, so uh, look for that in the near future. But you can see uh, ones that I've done that in a non-live form uh, that are archived at youtube.com slash Patrick Kulpik. Um, and I guess if I say youtube.com slash Patrick Kulpik enough times, then I'll hit the magic number that maybe you'll catch it and then you'll go over there. But yeah, you can you can catch that and a bunch of other videos I've been doing. I've been doing uh, daily Rocket League streams on a mostly daily basis for the last two weeks. And I've been really enjoying it. So we'll probably keep doing that. So... Uh, Self Noise One asks, "Hi Patrick, thanks for the great podcast. This might sound strange, but has anyone ever said you sound exactly like Christopher Lambier when you laugh?" This occurred to me out of the blue while listening to Match Three today. So Match Three is my weekly podcast with Gita Jackson and Sam Phillips. We record every Tuesday night. They go up uh, roughly every Wednesday morning, uh, but they go on Wednesday uh, sometime. Um, it's uh, Gita is a freelance writer and Sam is a middle school teacher that uh, kind of gives us a perspective on games that you kind of really can't get anywhere else. It's really interesting. Had a lot of fun doing it for the last two months or so, and we're excited to see where it goes from here. Um, no, no one has told me that I sound like Christopher Lambier uh, when uh, I laugh, but if that is something that people think is a thing, please let me know. Please write in. Please comment if you think that I sound, or maybe Christopher Lambier, I could be pronouncing that wrong, L-A-M-B-E-R-T. I think that's who you mean, at the sportscaster, right, Christopher Lambier? Uh, uh, or do you think I'm Raiden from Mortal Kombat? I don't know who that guy, actor's name is. I might be getting that wrong. Maybe it's the same thing. I don't know. Well, Tempered Pizza, also a great username. Uh, the first player to abandon a ranked match is now banned from matchmaking for 15 minutes. Oh, he was quoting from the new Rocket League patch. Looks like the new Rocket League patch answered your prayers. That's a tough punishment than just taking ranking points away. Oh. I've been waiting for this moment for so long, and by so long, I mean the two weeks that I've been playing Rocket League. I guess more than that. I've been playing Rocket League for about three weeks now, but absolutely. You know, what's been really frustrating about playing Rocket League is that some folks in the first minute say you're down two or three goals, which can happen, and happens often, actually. You just have things not go your way. You're miscommunicating with your teammates, and boom, all of a sudden, it seems like the deck is stacked against us. We're not going to be able to make it through, but to be quite honest... If you are only a minute or two minutes or three minutes into a match, that is plenty of time for you to come back to win the game. And so when you play, especially in a ranked, so let me try and explain the difference between ranked and non-ranked matches in Rocket League. So in Rocket League, in a non-ranked match in which there is no penalty, you're just kind of playing for funsies. You know, it's kind of an exhibition game. If someone drops out, whether because they decide to quit or because of a network connection problem, uh, the game just slots someone else in. If someone else is trying to match make, boom, two minutes in, there'll be someone else playing with you. Or they'll put a bot in. Either way, you'll be playing on an even, key, even uh, amount of players on each team. If you play a ranked match, if uh, for some reason someone is not able to participate in the match mid-match, usually it is not because of a connection error. It is far often because someone is a whiny baby and decides they don't want to keep playing. The game does not put in a bot. The game does not slot in another player. It's a ranked match, so you have to just deal with two-on-one or three-on-two or three-on-one, and that's completely unfair, and it's so frustrating because you, I've 
anyone that's played enough Rocket League, anyone that's in a ranked match should know that there is plenty of time to come back. And the idea that you're only going to participate in Rocket League matches where you are up ahead and have the upper hand in the first minute is ridiculous and does not show someone that understands the dynamics of a Rocket League match and how they're going to play out. Uh, So what they did in the new patch is that if you quit, there's a 15-minute ban on matchmaking. Your your ranking stays the same. None of that changes. Um, But uh, your banned from playing in ranked matches for the next 15 minutes, which is a long time because ranked, uh, every match in Rocket League is five minutes. So it's like, you know, you're always bouncing from match to match to match. And the idea that you cannot participate in another one for 15 minutes is, I think, a really terrific punishment. Furthermore, the first person to quit is the only one that's punished. So often what will happen uh, is someone that quits and it's like, well, am I supposed to quit too? Am I going to seem like a jerk? Am I going to get a 15 minute ban? Absolutely not. So if you're the second person to quit, because the first person quit, you're good to go. So, hallelujah, that makes uh, ranked stuff so much nicer uh, in Rocket League. And also, for people that aren't aware of what changed in the patch notes, when they quit, you kind of squeal with glee because you know they're about to be banned and they don't know what's coming, and it feels pretty good. Next question comes uh, from Scott Dave. Uh, regarding your question discussion on when games click, uh, my biggest click happened when I was playing Luminez on the 360. There's an achievement for getting 500,000 points, and at that time, my high was about 60,000. I thought, there's no way I can ever get 500,000 points. Then, after many games, it clicked. I realized how to use the L cubes, three of one color, one of the other, effectively. It was my aha moment, and it changed the game to the point where I could easily get over a million points. My biggest complaint with games is when I hit a wall and realize no matter how many times I play, I will no longer get better. Threes is my prime example. I could play the game for years and never beat my high score. A good game will always make you feel, if you put in the effort, you will reap the rewards. That is totally true in terms of games that get really frustrating when you play them for hours and you don't feel like you're making any progress. And it's not even that you're making progress. There are different types of progress, right? Like, so it's progress that is demonstrated in your play, in your actions. And there is progress in your mental understanding of the game. So uh, to go back to Rocket League, for example, because that's kind of the game I'm still learning right now. There are plenty of times where I play Rocket League where I make a mistake with my fingers, but I know what I wanted to do in my head. And I know how to enact that to my fingers, but in the moment with the anxiety, maybe it doesn't play out exactly the way I want. But... What happens the more I play Rocket League is that I understand fundamentally and mentally what I want to do in that game. And so the frustration comes not from, often frustration is derived from not knowing what went wrong or being like, oh, that's so frustrating that happened. Like, there's no way I could have prevented that. It's actually more frustrating when you understand what you could have done, why you could have prevented it and to be angry at your fingers for it not actually being uh, challenged and taken care of. So I, I feel like I completely understand where Scott Dave is coming from because it's when you play games, you're like, I just don't get it. Like, I'm just banging my head against a wall. Nothing's changing. But I love playing games, and I love having moments where the progression happens in different ways. Sometimes it happens in your fingers. Sometimes it happens in your head. Uh, sometimes it's a combination of the two. Um, but, but nonetheless, there's progression happening, and you can recognize that. And it's those moments when it's not happening that you kind of just go, oh. and that certainly happens all the time. Uh, next up comes from a faceless name. Hey, p Claps, can I call you p Claps? I guess you already did. I'm going to call you p Claps. Okay, we'll keep going, faceless name. I've been catching up on three beers deep, and it makes me glad you keep your video output up after leaving the bomb shelter. I really want to see you and Austin interact, by the way. Well, we're both going to be at PAX. Uh, I don't know if we'll do anything together necessarily, but I think it'd be really fun to hang out with Austin and maybe just record a podcast together. So if I say that out loud... Then I'll talk to Austin next week and see if we can set that up. At any rate, are you excited for Everyone's Gone to the Rapture? It's almost here, and only Galaxy being the week before is keeping me chilled at all. Is Galaxy really next Tuesday? Oh, gosh. I am so tremendously excited for Galaxy. I know that's not the question that you asked. You asked about Everyone uh, Has Gone to the Rapture. I'm excited for that as well. It's actually it's weird uh, because it seemed like July and August were going to be devoid of games that were going to keep me busy and suddenly Rocket League, everyone's going to the Rapture, M++, Galaxy. There's just a ton of stuff happening on a lot of different platforms, a lot of it happening on PlayStation 4. Um, And everyone's going to the Rapture makes me very excited because 
the Chinese room has done really interesting things over the years. Dear Esther was, uh, I think, really interesting. I know that uh, Amnesia Machine for Pigs was polarizing to Amnesia fans that were looking for kind of a direct sequel that carried forward a lot of the things from the original game. That's not really what a Machine for Pigs did, but I appreciated a Machine for Pigs for what it was. Um, and I, I can't, I know, I don't know very much about Everyone's Gone to the Rapture. I purposely avoided the trailers. I didn't go to any of the demos um at e3 or anything like that not because i was like "Ooh, i don't want to know it just kind of happened that like alex went to it or brad went to it um and so i just didn't have a chance to see the game yet and then once it became clear i was never going to see the game before uh release i've just sort of went Woo, i'm just going to avoid that game uh entirely but i cannot wait for that to come out i wish i didn't have so many things going on on like weekends coming up i'm going to uh a friend's lake house next weekend I'm going to a wedding the weekend after that, um, and then the weekend after that, I have a bunch of plans. Just summers, man. In Chicago, when it's not warm for that long, the weekends get bu- 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 filled up with things to do uh, because everyone's out and about trying to get something going on. So yes, I'm excited for everyone's going to the rapture. No, I don't know when I'm going to play it, uh, but I, I can't wait to. Uh, next up... Queen of Poor Life Choices. Again, excellent username. Hey, Patrick, why do you think Life is Strange is getting critically panned? Seems like it's universally getting five to six out of tens across the board, which is a huge surprise to me since I think it's better than most of Telltale's post-season one Walking Dead games. Do you think those ratings are deserved? It definitely has its flaws, but it's one of my personal Game of the Year contenders. Life is Strange is an odd game. It has all sorts of flaws that is someone that is a huge fan of it and will probably have that game on their top 10 list as we get towards the end of the year. Uh, I recognize a lot of the problems with Life is Strange, and yet I'm so excited when a new episode comes out. I'm totally wrapped up in the characters. I think part of what I really like about Life is Strange that maybe isn't as indicative in the first episode is that the first episode spends a lot of time setting up the special powers that Max has, you know, the rewind powers that she can alter time and, and do different things. Um, and that there's this tornado that is coming to Arcadia Bay, like some sort of apocalypse. And it sets the stakes of the game higher than what actually goes down in the episodes after that. Not to say that those things don't linger, not to say that the powers or the lingering uh, sort of dread over Arcadia Bay doesn't play into the story. It absolutely is, is part of it. But sort of the relationship between Chloe and Max, um, this Rachel Amber, a girl that they're trying to track down and find the truth about, this the Prescott family that is has their thumb all over Arcadia Bay, Chloe's uh, mother and, and, and her father. Like There's just all sorts of character dynamics, family dynamics, personal dynamics that actually make Life is Strange is so interesting. That's what keeps me coming back to Life is Strange over and over. And it wouldn't surprise me if the first episode puts people off in a way that they go, well, I'm just not going to, that's just not my thing. And then it's also the script is kind of weird and the dialogue is kind of hit or miss. Like there's all sorts of parts of Life is Strange that I look at and go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yet I'm episodes behind on game of thrones i haven't played tales from the borderlands other than half of the first episode and i cannot wait for the fifth life is strange episode to come out so even if i have trouble articulating it even if other people have trouble articulating it there is something about life is strange that is absolutely captivating and for the people that clicks for it really really clicks and for the people that kind of go i don't really understand it they seem to be off in the distance, just kind of rolling their eyes at us. So I'm with you, queen of poor life choices. I had to make sure I got it all together. Uh, I, I think it, that Life is Strange is fantastic, and I, I definitely recommend people check it out. If they were kind of on the fence or maybe thought the first episode wasn't that great, you know, maybe wait till there's a, a sale on the season pass. But whew, that next episode is going to come out in the next uh, – it comes out like every month and a half or so. And I am so excited to see how that story wraps up, wondering if they're going to – cop out on something big that happens at the end of the last episode but i hope not if they do i hope they have a good justification uh dip switch quit your job live in the trees become one with the trees that seems fair that actually seems that seems completely fair 
Uh, Morio says, was the, was the Zombie U naming a cunning masterstroke so when they brought it to other platforms, it would have the name of the couple of great underseen films in the genre. Uh, what Morio is pointing out is that the zombie films, as Z-O-M-B-I, uh, are a bunch of really uh, fantastic, gory, over-the-top uh, zombie creature features that uh, if you're into gore films, like the, these movies, part of the appeal of them is like specifically there's a sequence in which uh, a woman is... Uh, puts her eye through a keyhole to see if the zombies are coming through and then an, like a stick goes through and it jams through her eye and the camera spends a long time lingering on like it going through her eye and into the guts like it's kind of the reason you watch it it's over the top it's not meant to be serious zombie two or three is also infamously where a zombie fights a shark underwater and it's actually a shark that i think has um uh like bait attached to it so the shark is kind of like going after the guy in zombie makeup and he's making his way across the water god what a great movie and such great soundtracks as well so i guess if there's anything i want you to take away from three beers deep this week it is please go watch the zombie films uh but that's going to do it for three beers deep for this week you can submit future questions to patrickklubbick.tumblr.com uh, you can listen to the audio version under inventory management on iTunes. You can also go to inventorymanagement.simplecast.fm where you can stream and download the episodes. That is going to do it for Three Beers Deep. I will see everyone next week.